I'm standing here on the edge of a food forest. Three years ago, I came to Curaçao and I came with a mission. I wanted to, to, to organize, to, to create a food forest based on permaculture principles. And when I came here, you wouldn't believe it. If you see the situation now, it was completely barren. It was a desert. Nothing would really grow here except for some grasses and some local herbs, which I consider as pioneer plants. Very important, very important. I made use of them. Let me show you around this food forest just to give you a little view of, about what is possible here in Curacao with permaculture, principles of permaculture. And I must say every day, every day I learn something new, every day. And what I learn makes me very optimistic about the possibilities worldwide, but especially here for Curacao, to change things around for the better. Let me show you some trees, bananas, the moringa, aki, moringa, bananas with a youngster. Sour sop. I planted a lot of sour sops. You will see them abundantly for the leaves in the first case because of the medicinal properties. Guyaba, moringa. See, I walk you around the the, the edges of the food forest, coconut tree, and underneath the coconut tree you can see abundantly growing what they call here oregano, uh, herbal spice tea, and also with medicinal properties. A date tree from with dates from date seeds from Holland, which I took brought from Holland, and here you can see this is Obesia lebeck. They call it uh, Barba de Uncommon here, and it's a nitrogen fixer. It came here because of the mulch use. You see the mulch here on the soil, and this, the mulch is really the key to the success from what you see here. And this nitrogen fixing tree, I use it to chop and drop so I will chop the leaves and drop it on the soil and it will feed the soil and while it's growing it's also feeding the soil because the roots are full of nitrogen so they take the nitrogen out of the atmosphere and bring it into the soil very important if you want to grow food okay and also make use of the grass see uh, I grow grass also so I leave certain parts of the food forest open and I grow grass there and why? Because grass make one of the most important and functional mulches. You see here? And also grass got another function. It keeps the soil moist for a longer period. I found it out by accident. Uh, I just observed and I'm still observing every single day. I'm still a pupil in the, less, in the school of nature, mama nature. She's teaching me every single day. Every single day I learn something new. Yeah, so and I found out that where grass is growing, the soil is uh, is uh, wet, moist for a very long period. If you compare it with where nothing grows, so so grass was was my first uh, uh, way to start this forest. Here you can see sugarcane, bananas. A lot of, I grow a lot of different bananas. There's a noni tree over there, sugarcane. This is. Uh, Pigeon pea, a nitrogen fixing tree also, and it gave me a lot of beans, nice beans. And we used them in the cooking workshop, nature cooking, something we developed over here, me and Said Lawrence, with products from this food forest. This is a nopal cactus. I planted just one blade of it. <laughs> Look what's happened to it. A lot of Pigeon peas, wandule, as they call it here, of wandu, don't you wandu? This is a calabas tree, and here you see another nitrogen fixing tree. And underneath, that's making use because this tree is really a tree that likes to grow in the tropical rainforest. And underneath, you know, the capony of um, the uh, pigeon pea, there's a breadfruit tree, little breadfruit tree, and it can't stand the, the hot sun yet. So it now 
is guided by this pigeon pea. It gets uh, nitro uh, nitrogen from it, and also the, the, the tree protects it from the burning sun and will guarantee that the soil will stay moist for this tree, little tree. When it's growing big, I prune this pigeon pea, and you will get the place and space where you can grow abundantly. You see the company. Okay, let's see the, the corners of the food forest, the edges, you see, keeping the camera a little bit higher, moringas, a lot of moringas, a lot of pigeon peas, they are really the pioneer plants, but I made, made use of local herbs also, that came spontaneously, I see them as uh, pioneer plants, for instance this pyramid bush, they call it Mazora Cora here, most of them that came here, I left them because they are really providing something for the food forest. They are really forest starters and once the forest is developing itself, they will make way for other uh, trees to grow. And the main thing is really to, to update the soil, to get a good soil, so I use a, little, a lot of mulch. Here is another technique I use from permaculture. This is elephant grass. The main problem that we got uh, uh, that our soils are so dry is because of the ever blowing wind here in uh, Curacao. It's not really the sun only, but in the combination with the wind, it's drying out. So this is a wall that breaks the wind. A wall of long elephant grasses that really is protecting the forest from too much wind. Too much drying out so whenever it's moisty it, the, 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 the moist will stay longer into the forest it will stay longer humid and that's the reason why you see this abundant grow here growth here you see let me walk you just a little bit here you saw a coconut tree there's an older pigeon pea in between there see a little pomegranate it's got a fruit hanging yeah you can see it I got a lot of um, grenades pomegranates also here you can see the mulch on the soil and also this very very useful and inside the forest and let's go outside the forest again the elephant grass and here I grow normal grass to feed to get this mulch to feed the forest and also to keep this soil moist here that I didn't put mulch yet the grass is a living mulch here I put a, a kapok tree a cotton silk tree kankan tree as they say in Suriname it will be a very huge tree this is makapruim they call it a plum tree and you know you just put a stick into the soil and yeah in time it will develop itself see behind this elephant grass a little sour sap in between a pyramid bush and a pigeon pea okay another view see i came from there uh, you see the nopal cactus over there and Watch the edge of the food forest. Let us take a walk into the forest. And it, you know it's nice at night time when you hear all those singing frogs and the sounds in the forest is really like a jungle. And this is also sugarcane. And spontaneously this almond tree are coming up. So I can grow a lot of almonds if I want to, but I think I will use them to chop and drop because in uh, I will make more light in here, I create more space and light and then I'll grow things that didn't want to grow at first because of the situation of the soil. So the forest is also a starter of agriculture, you see in between, getting really into the forest, banana, this sour sop growing over there papaya and all I have to do is create some light for them so I chop and drop a lot of this pigeon pea and that's their uh, their nutri they, they get the nutrients from this tree 
so I will give I will let more light coming through the forest by chopping and dropping of the pigeon peas see the elephant grass is protecting this area against too much winds you see the mulch it's like a real forest thick layers I put layers of 20 centimeters above 20 centimeters above 20 centimeters and you know what happened because of the sun burns most of the mulch is either burns oxidated or transformed in really black earth let us see let us check it out if we see what's happening here you see a lot of animals are getting away and you see what's the color of this soil perfect perfect soil perfect so and this used to be the diabasis they call it here stony nothing would really ever grow here okay just take a little walk see some bean varieties are crawling here yeah another sour sop under the canopy of uh, pigeon pea bananas and here I got some aloe some herbs the spinach is grow crawling over the soil and I'm planting some dragon fruits and more cacti more avocado tree and this is what they call a mispel tree here look the fruits a lot of them a lot of them this tree is really enjoying himself having a good time and used to be uh, nearly starving more death than life this is acerola or uh, shimaruko as they call it here and this is the tree that is uh, nothing really can grow above it so I should take that in consideration also. Here you see a berry. Hope you can see it. Most of them I eat already. Okay, let us move further. You see the Okay. The mangoes were gone last week more bananas and also here are little papayas coming up between herbs this is oregano cubano and the other oregano is also growing here papaya another banana tree in between the local herbs that this is berambi berambi this is uh, Rompe Sarangue. It came spontaneously here and I left it, of course, because of the healing properties of this plant. So if a plant is medicinal and uh, decided to come and grow here, of course I let him. And he's growing underneath this Moringa tree, which I've been pruned several times for tea production. So the Moringas here I grow for tea, not a Moringa. And these are growing very fast for only a couple of weeks. I cut those trees from here, I pruned them and see how big they are now so i can prune them again and dry them and make tea out of it and also a lot of pineapples i'm growing underneath the canopy see that's what i'm working on right now because in the beginning i couldn't grow other species i first have really had to grow the trees before i could grow anything else some bean varieties and here you see cacao coming up and you know this climate is not really good for cacao but here the circumstances are created and in the shade protected and feed it by this nitrogen fixer it will develop itself so cassava and here this is where I'm working to Um, I forgot a name in Eng English, we, say, we call tire. This is uh, tamarick or uh, curcuma. So I want to grow a lot of curcuma and tamarick here in the shade of these trees, of these papayas and this banana tree. Ginger I will plant over there. Now this is uh, mandarin, mandarin tree. Yeah, let's get the papayas coming up. And here you see nice case of 
uh, companion planting is bean, the, we call it bonje kanuku, which is also a nitrogen fixer feeding the soil, is climbing up into this banana tree, which offers him support and uh, in change of that, exchange of that, he, he get ni uh, nutrients from this bean. You see, local herbs, oregano cubano, papaya, another herb, the oregano, and here I got some cassava coming up. You see, a lot of different varieties of plants I planted here. Okay. Let us see the edges of the forest again. Hear the birds singing. It's very nice to walk, take a walk to relax your nerves. And most of the work I'm doing right now is not even water, not planting, but you're really pruning, pruning to feed the soil with what is growing on it, the beans especially. I prune a lot of these. More cassava. Let's go inside of here. This is the baby of another banana tree that gave bananas a couple of months ago. Well, it was one and a half months ago. Look how big this one is already. Really satisfied here with the circumstances. Before it wasn't really that nice. His mother wasn't that really lucky as this youngster is growing very fast. Again some pine fruits. a lot of pigeon peas a lot of pigeon peas a lot of moringas also pruned and underneath new things are coming this is day three three years old I brought the seeds from Holland so three years ago on this day I arrived here one of the first thing I planted I remember I think the second day I arrived I start planting sowing seeds already well <laughs> this one here I'm very proud of it and there you see another banana tree, a pomegranate. This is lemon, and this is guava. I have to uh, cut the grass here a little bit, use it as mulch. Don't worry too much about it now. Here, a new generation of pigeon peas are coming up, cassava. It's really a forest like situation. You see the soil covered with mulch layers of mulch this is sour sop check these leaves these leaves I grow I grow them sour sop of course for the fruits but it will take uh, a couple of years but I grow them especially for the leaves for the medicinal properties you can sleep very well and also uh, as a lot of research is explaining they discover that it's got very strong anti-cancer properties, stronger than uh, chemotherapy. See, what a beautiful leaf. I really like the, the color of the, those. This is my favorite crop over here. I planted about 40 uh, soursop trees over here. Let us walk a little bit further. More pomegranate, I got a lot of pomegranate trees as I told you. And here, ah, the oranges are laying on the soil. I have to pick them. Wow, I think because of the rain. Oh, this, let's check for the pineapple. You now we're going really into the forest and we got ourselves. They are not too big, but last year I got them also and they were very tasty very tasty I think I can eat these guys because they are laying on the soil already wow mother nature said decided to throw them on the soil throw them on the okay let us move us out above this pineapple passing see this guy Pomegranate. I got some thorns in my head of the orange tree protecting his fruits. <laughs> the flowers of the flowers of the pomegranate. Uh, 
and this is also nice something nice you see the, the there's a real forest sour shops underneath growing uh, a lot of herbs for the kitchen uh, oregano cubano this is tamarick also ginger tamarick growing under the canopy of the canopy of the trees that are grow moringa and this is uh, castor oil the plant that produces castor oil very nice Some date trees, more banana trees, and a lot of oregano. Oregano is really my number one crop, together with the moringas and the pigeon peas. Well, this is the shape, the shape of the food forest. On the other side, I will show you another time. I got an agroforestry project more organized, more like what a farmer uh, understands as a farm, as planting. But this is a very nice system to plant your food with. In. Okay, thank you for watching. I'm celebrating my three years arrival, third year arrival here in Curacao. And this, if I'm watching this, and I still got it very clear in my mind how this place used to be dry a desert really a desert cannot imagine and now what an abundance what an abundance here what an abundance can you imagine if the, all those trees are bearing fruits I keep on eating the whole day through thank you for watching thank you for celebrating this little success and let's make Curacao green we can do it Oh yeah, let me show you that huge eucalyptus. I use this also to uh, chop and drop. People are uh, have a lot of sentiment against eucalyptus, but if you chop and drop them, you got the top quality soil and also the roots are uh, which are not used at that time because the, it's like a mirror. What you see above, you see it also under the soil, and they will. Uh, they will be composted also if you chop and drop the eucalyptus three four times a year then they are really the, the other plants are really benefiting from they will transport transport and uh, irrigate water through the soil can you imagine these trees got its roots very deep pumping up the water and but to, in order to, to get these nutrients from the top layer of the soil, where the really the nutrients are, you have to redistribute the water, pumping the water into the soil. And of course the other plants standing in the direct neighborhood of the eucalyptus tree are also getting that water. You've got to study nature to understand these things. Okay, I'm still learning every day. Hope you're learning too. Hope you make this island green again because I, I to my understanding to my belief it was a green place and permaculture and especially the latest techniques of uh, Centropic agroforestry can re-green this island and also produce a lot of food at the same time okay thank you for watching